Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at a tutorial that was in, oh, I want to say the July newsletter from, from tutvid.com. Uh, this is creating a Twilight text effect, that movie Twilight. Um, I've heard an awful lot about it. Uh, never seen it. Have no interest in seeing it, but that's not really the point. Um, it was pretty popular, so I decided to go ahead and take a crack at creating this text effect. Now, I, I don't remember when it came out. You know, a couple months ago, a year ago, whatever it was. Um, so this is kind of an afterthought, but... Let's see what we can get done, and here is uh, the final result from the newsletter. So we're going to go ahead and try to recreate this uh, in the video format. Uh, we have here the word Wildlight. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is close that and go File New and create a brand new document. Let's size this document uh, 1280 by 720. Let's go with, with that. Hit OK. And here's our brand new document. Background can be black. Um, matter of fact, it's probably, you're probably better off if you go with black. And the first thing we want to do is grab the text tool. And this is kind of important because now if you created this document the same size as me, that is 1280 by 720, you're going to be able to follow even my text size that I, I type here. Uh, first off, we're using the Times New Roman font face, pretty standard font face, um, regular. And for now, the size is 24 points. We're going to up that size in a moment. But for now, let's just type the word Y light and then hold down control and then hit the enter key and that will commit your changes um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and go window character and this is the character panel uh, or yeah panel I almost said palette panel and uh, what the character panel is going to allow you to do is change all kinds of things with your type uh, which is going to be pretty important here for us so the first thing we're going to do well make sure you have the text layer selected we're going to set the size to mm, I want to say 200 points there we go, that's nice and large. And then we're gonna set the font tracking or the size between the letters here to 75. All right, there we go, great. And I believe that's everything we wanna do with the text. It can really be any color you want uh, because we're just gonna cover that with the texture. So I'm just gonna stick with white. I'm gonna drag the character, well, I'm gonna drag this whole mess back into the dock. And then we're just going to center up the text here on our document by hitting Command or Control A. That selects all. Press the V key, which grabs your Move tool. And up here we have some alignment options. So we're going to align to the center, align to the vertical center. And there we go. Command or Control D to deselect, and we're ready to rock and roll. So now that that's done, we want to go ahead and convert this text to a path. And that's one of the great things you can do here in Photoshop when you're working with live type. You can go ahead and convert it to a work path. You don't have to worry about loading it as a selection and using the paths panel and converting it to a path that way. And then you can get these really jagged, not so great paths. And that's kind of putting it lightly. Uh, so we're going to go layer type, create work path. And there we go. We have a nice work path. It's sort of this you know jagged looking edge that appears everywhere. If we shut the layer off, we have the outline, which is our path. Hop over to the paths panel, voila, we have it right there. We can double click this work path and name it anything we want. I'm just going to name it text temp, uh, temp, there we go, uh, for template. Uh, and go back to the layers panel. Now is kind of the tricky part. I'm going to try to kind of fly through it quickly. Uh, but now comes the part where we actually edit the text and try to make it look more like the text that is in the, you know, the original Twilight uh, logo or, you know, text or whatever. Uh, so what I'm going to do is grab, we're going to be working with both the pen tool and the path slash direct selection tool, really the, the direct selection tool, which is going to allow us to actually select anchor points within a path, whereas the path selection tool allows you to select the whole path and move it around and free transform the path, stuff like that. The direct selection tool is what's actually going to allow you to edit the path itself. So we're going to work with the direct selection tool. And the first thing I'm going to do is zoom into the top of the T and we want to just make this straight, run straight to the top. So I'm going to hit A, which is going to give me my selection tool. And I'm going to select that anchor point there and just delete it. And I'm going to select this anchor point here and delete that. Now that we have this open-ended path, I'm going to grab the pen tool and I'm going to select that path, just like so. And I'm going to alt-click that anchor point. And then I'm going to come right up here and I'm just going to click on this anchor point right here to close it right off. It gives me a nice straight line, although not really because up here, this anchor point still, if I hit A and select it, there's that tangent handle coming out of it. The way that I quickly got rid of that was just by holding on my alt key and clicking on that anchor point. 
So alt click the anchor point, and there we go. We have a nice straight line connecting them. All right, the rest of the text we can probably pretty well leave alone. You can go through and tweak it if you want, if you want to add a nice big uh, curve to the L. You know what, what the heck, let's go ahead and do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the anchor points out here, those two, and delete them both. There we go, and I'm going to delete these two right here. You can see two anchor points there, delete them. And uh, this guy right here, you know what, we'll delete him too because he's not straight. And we're going to delete this one sticking out right here. All right, so what I want to do when I'm looking at this is make the L maybe significantly taller than the rest of the letters. So this is really easy. Just select these two anchor points here and, you know, move them up. All right, just like so. And I'm going to move it up a little more, eh, maybe right about there. And then I'm just going to grab this point and I'm going to move it up a little closer like so. So what I want to do is zoom in to this now. And then with a the pen tool, select the anchor point on the top of the taller side. And I'm just going to pull it out to, you know, right about here. There we go. And then alt click that anchor point. It's going to get rid of that extra tangent handle so I can just sharply come back right to here. All right, like so. And something like that. There we go. I'm going to zoom out. And we've, uh, you know, made that little effect there at the top of the L. Now, the real tricky part comes down here at the base of the G, making that kind of spiral, spiraling little spiral. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So what we want to do is we want to begin by just selecting this. And the first thing you want to do when you select your path is identify where your anchor points are. What do I have to work with? Well, I can see I've got all these anchor points. And whenever I delete one anchor point, it's just going to move the path back to the anchor point before it. Here's my example. You see I've got one anchor point here at the corner. I've got an anchor point here and another anchor point way down here. I want to delete this guy in the center. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring me right back to just having an anchor point at the top and one down here because I want the spiral to come into the center of the G and just, you know, eventually end. So I also want to select this anchor point here and delete that. Before we go any further, I'm just going to join these two open ends. I'm going to grab the path, the, the pen tool, excuse me, select that anchor point. I'm actually going to alt click the anchor point and, uh, hold down my alt key and click on the other anchor point and just join the two together. I'm not worried about it being too, too perfect, although it seems to blend in very nicely because the G kind of flattens out there. Now that we've done that, the easy part, all we have to do is select this anchor point here and just begin drawing our uh, little spiral here. Now just keep in mind as you draw this spiral, you have this outside line you also have to draw, so don't go too wide with this inside uh, spiral. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it right into here. Bring it around this way and this way, like so. And then I'm going to alt click this anchor point. By alt clicking an anchor point at an end, bringing in that tangent handle, you're not you know, applying any kind of curve to that point. So you can just sharply come right back from where you came from. All right, like so. See, I'm just, and I can't quite go that far. So I'm just going to go to right there and then bring her around this way. And as I go out, I'm slowly getting wider. I'm just going to hold down my Alt key and just edit that tangent handle right there just to kind of smooth that out. Again, select right up here again. And then continue drawing your points. That's not quite wide enough for my liking. Because again, remember, we got to come around and meet up with this point on the G very nicely. All right, I just want to grab this point, And I'm using my direct selection tool. The hotkey for that again is A. I'm just clicking and dragging that uh, anchor point like so and you, when you select an anchor point you can drag the anchor point when you actually click a path between two anchors you get the tangent handle so you can actually edit the curve itself which is what I'm doing right here pulling up on that tangent handle just kinda tweaking the curve and there we go we just have a rough spiral and you don't want this to be a perfectly smooth spiral in the the poster it really sort of looks like it's kind of a roughly drawn type spiral so now that we have that we're ready to go on to the next uh, aspect of this text effect and the next thing we want to do is well first zoom out let's uh... let's check to see what we've got here so it looks pretty good uh, what I want to do now is create a new layer. So hit the new layer button. There we go. And we want to fill this path really with any color. And just to illustrate that point, I'm going to grab uh, a bright blue here. There we go. A nice light blue. I'm going to go to the paths panel. And you can see we have our text template right here. I'm just going to hit this little icon right here, uh, which is the fill path icon. Uh, other ways you can do this, you can just right click and choose fill path. And then it's going to say, hey, what would you like me to fill with? I'm just going to say foreground color. Okay. There we go. Now, 
we still have this kind of rough edge, and that rough edge is that's just our path. We don't have to worry about that. Matter of fact, you can easily deselect it just by hitting escape. See that? Just completely deselects it. Now that we've done that, we want to go ahead and apply a nice uh, concrete slash pebbly texture to this this text. And this texture is available at uh, www.sxc.hu. Let me kind of spell that out for you here. Uh, here we go. sxc.hu. That's the website address. Tons of free stock photography. Check it out. I will try to link the specific image that I'm using in the information or the description of this video. So here is the image I'm using. I'm just going to drag it in from Bridge, which is off screen. Uh, right here. This is it. And I'm just going to go Command or Control A to select all. Command or Control C to copy. Command or Control W, which closes that document. And then Command or Control V to paste it into my new document. Now, what I want to do is zoom out because I want to free transform this and I'm just going to hit Command or Control T. You can see that, whew, wow, that's pretty big. Hold down the Shift key to constrain proportions and just drag it back so it's nice and, you know, small. It fits in here. And we want to basically fit it over our text like so. And I'm just going to hold down my Alt key. I'm going to zoom back in, by the way. Control plus, Command plus. Hold down my Alt or Option key and drag this handle from the top down. Again, so we're just kind of fitting this above our text. I'm going to hit the ch little check button up here in this top control bar. And I'm going to shut that off and control click it. And you can see I've got it pretty much right over my text. That's pretty good. Um, I'm actually going to drag it up and over a little bit. I'm going to go view, shut snapping off, under view, snap. We don't want that annoying snapping. There we go. Just like so, we have that. Very nice. Now, in order to apply this effect, we want to do what is called creating a clipping mask. And a clipping mask basically is just going to mask this automatically to the layer beneath it. So this stone will only show up wherever the pixels are on the layer below, which in this case spells out the word Y light. So I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key and just move my mouse between these two layers and you get that little icon. You can click that and voila, you have a clipping mask. I'm going to undo that, however, and show you the kind of more technical slash manual way. That's layer, uh, layer, or not layer mask, create clipping mask. There we go. And you can see there's even a hotkey, Alt, Control, G. That's a great, uh, Great little hotkey, Command Option G on the Mac, Control Alt G on PC, and it just is going to clip your layer to the layer beneath it. Really, really a great little hotkey. Uh, so what I want to do now is select this layer, and we have it selected, and I want to go Image Adjustments Levels because I want to increase the contrast. So I'm just going to pull the black handle in, and I'm going to pull the white handle in, and there we go. We've really increased contrast. I'm going to zoom in on this. Uh, just to make sure that I'm, I'm getting my text nice here. There we go. Looking good. What I want to do now is hit Command or Control J, and it duplicates the layer. Note it doesn't clip it. So let's try out that hotkey. Control Alt G, Command Option G on the Mac. There we go. Great. We're going to set this blend mode to screen, which is going to really brighten things up. And I'm going to duplicate this layer again. So I'm going to select it and hit Command or Control G. And again, Control, or excuse me, Command or Control J to duplicate. Command Alt or Command Option or Control Alt G to reclip it. And notice it's really bright because it duplicated even the screen effect. I actually want to change the blend mode to overlay. And we get this really strong effect, maybe a little bit too strong. So I'm going to come down to the screen layer and I'm just going to decrease that opacity a bit so we can really see that texture. Decreasing that opacity to down around 30%. So the next thing we want to do is, number one, double check in your paths panel. Make sure you've saved your initial path because you spent all that time tweaking the L and making the little spiral thing in the G and fixing the T and all that good stuff. So make sure you save this path. And again, the, only, the way to save that is just double click it and give it a name. So this path will not be deleted now when we go and create new path or paths. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the layers panel and I just want to create a new layer. Hit the new layer icon right there. There we go. We have a new layer. On this new layer, um, what I want to do, I'll make sure we've deselected that path. What, what I want to do is grab the line tool. And the line tool is going to be located underneath your rectangle or rounded rectangle tool. It's over here with your shape tools. Note the hot key is U. So you can hit the U key several times until you see the line tool pop up. Or you may have to go shift U if you haven't changed that preference in your preferences panel. Uh, so we've got the line tool here. Uh, and I want to go ahead and set the weight to uh, one pixel. That's fine. The important part here is that we set it to draw paths. So we want to select the middle icon there. It's the icon with the pen inside of the path. And all I want to do is go ahead and start drawing lines, you know, around this text. 
you know, there were those like whatever dripping smoky things coming off of the text in the original logo. So that's what I want to do here. Now, one or two tips, two tips that you want to keep in mind while you do this, and it's really going to make life much easier for you is use the shift key. The shift key allows you to draw a perfectly straight line. And then you see how I'm moving this line around before I've even finished drawing it? That is using the space bar. I'm clicking and holding space bar. So right now, while I'm doing this, I'm holding shift and I'm holding space bar. By doing that, you really allow yourself to just position, both get a perfectly straight line and perfectly position it. Uh, and then you let go of the mouse key and then let go of shift and space. And there you go, you have your first path. Note here in the paths panel, we have a brand new work path. I'm actually going to keep that open so we can kind of keep tabs on what's going on there. What I want to do now is draw another path right out of the bottom of the W, like so. And draw another path out of the other part of the W, like so. And I'm going to place another kind of smoky line up there. And then a line coming up here out of the H. Again, just play around with positioning. Make sure you get it just right. And uh, we're going to join the H, the I, and the L right here. And uh, maybe we'll draw a line coming off of the top of the H, like so, toward the L. And just pretty much put these wherever you want. I'm going to put one coming out of the front of the L here. That kind of looks like a good place to pop one. All right, great. I'm going to drop another one down here, maybe out of the I. Just a little ways, because the I is a bit of a shorter letter. And uh, then I'm going to make one going from the I across to the G. And maybe, you know what, we're going to go all the way from the L across to the G. There we go, great. Uh, and then we're going to join the I to the right through to the H, like so. Then we're going to bring a big one right down alongside the H. There we go. And then I'm going to come across the top of the H, join that up with the top of the T. And maybe shoot off the edge a little bit as well. And then, again, bring one all the way through the T, like so. And then, last but not least, we're just going to bring this right through, just like that. So we have all of these paths uh, kind of making our bit of text look more like an architectural sketch. But check out the paths panel. We've actually kept all of these. As, it, this is considered one path. Photoshop is not reading this as a ton of little paths. That's great because this is going to allow us to stroke these with a custom brush we're going to make very, very easily. Uh, so that's what we're going to take a look at doing right now is editing uh, our brush tool to make the brush we want. So go ahead and grab the brush tool. After grabbing the brush tool, we're going to go Window Brushes. This is going to open up the Brushes panel or the Brushes Editing panel. And we're really just going to do a couple simple things. We're going to grab, number one, a simple five pixel brush right here. It's a soft edge brush, so if you go to Brush Tip Shape here, uh, hardness should be set at zero. Uh, spacing 25%, you know, all just the default stuff. Where we're going to change some stuff is uh, number one in shape dynamics. What we're going to do is we're going to increase size jitter to 100%. Uh, we're not going to play with minimum diameter. We're going to increase angle jitter to 100%, and we're going to increase roundness jitter to 100%. Now, what we want to do is right here under size jitter, we want to change the control option. Even though I am using a tablet, I want to change it to fade because what this is going to do is it's automatically just going to fade this effect off uh, kind of into the night, if you will, uh, which is really great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to, let's try like 200. You can see it's, just giving, it's giving me basically a preview how it's going to draw it out and it's going to trail it right off. Great. The next thing I want to set is some scattering. Now, this is far too much scattering, as uh, you can probably tell. So we just want to scatter a little bit, just a touch. So maybe like 60 to 70%, right there, 66% looks great. Um, and count jitter, we can probably even up count jitter a bit, and maybe around 60% as well. Count is going to stay at 1. Uh, so there we go. We have our nice little brush. I'm going to move my brushes panel back into the dock right there. What I want to do is create a new layer, um, which it looks like I've already done here. I'm going to name this Trails. There we go. And set my foreground color to white. I'm just going to hit the D key and then the X key to flip my foreground and background colors. And over here on the Paths panel, I'm just going to right click and hit Stroke Path. And it's going to say, hey, what would you like me to stroke the path with? I'm going to say grab the brush tool. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to uh, deselect this work path. 
Now you can see that the vast majority of these are fading off. The reason some of these aren't fading off is because the fade ends where you ended the path. And I guess these couple guys coming here out of the bottom of the W, I started down below and worked my way back toward the W. So as a general rule when you're doing this, you really want to take your path and work it away from the letters at all times. Um, that's just going to give you a little bit of a nicer effect. And if I was, you know, doing this as, you know, artwork, I would go back and I would just flip these paths, you know, delete them, redraw them, whatever. But just as kind of a general rule, you want to start your path here in the letter and pull out of it because, you know, for instance, we started our path down here and we ended up here and you can see how it just nicely fades right away to nothingness. But overall, it looks pretty darn good. So now we're ready to go ahead and uh, add a touch of color to this. And we're going to do that by just adding kind of a glowing line here across the base of this. Uh, because really, uh, this text effect is actually very silver. So maybe what I should do is just select these text layers uh, and desaturate each one of them. And I'm going to do that quickly by just going Control-Shift-U. Select the next one, Control-Shift-U. And then select the last one, Control-Shift-U. And it's really just going to really desaturate that. And with that increased contrast, almost give it a nice silvery look. Great, now that we've done that, create a new layer and call this glow bar. And basically all I want to do here, I'm just going to kind of do this quickly. I'm going to grab the rectangle marquee tool and I'm just going to draw a very thin rectangle across the base of this text like so. And I'm going to fill that with, let's go with kind of a really magenta uh, slash hot pink, uh, you know, almost to give it a club feel, you know, vampires in, in the club kind of thing. Fill that Alt Backspace, Command or Control D to deselect. Now that we have that, we're ready to go ahead and glow or blur this. So I'm going to go Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And 5 pixels looks pretty nice. I kind of want to up it a little bit. Let's go with 8. And it really becomes difficult to see at 8. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Hit OK. And then we're going to hit Command or Control T. And we're just going to pull this apart a little bit. Hold the Alt or Option key. Just pull it straight out. There we go. And then we're going to duplicate this glow bar. Command or Control J. Uh, Command or Control J. Command and Control J, there we go. And uh, one more time, Command and Control J. Now, this last one, what I want to do is hit Command and Control T and really just size it down, almost to make it this just like a light bar going through the center of the rest of that color, like so. And I'm going to hit Command or Control U to bring up hue saturation, and we're just going to brighten that up. You can see right in there is where I have my bar happening. So I'm just going to brighten it up, you know, 50, 50, 60, you know, points higher. Hit OK. And there we go, we have this nice pinkish glow. The problem with this is, is it really doesn't look that realistic because it's not translating onto the text. Normally when you have something glowing in front of something else, the color is you know, projected onto whatever is around it. So we need to project some of this pinkish color onto the bottom part of this text. There's a really easy way we're gonna do that. First off, grab all this glowing stuff, select the top layer, shift, select the bottom. Command or Control G to group it. Double click, name that group uh, Glow Bar. Just to tidy up our layers panel a little bit. What I wanna do is go ahead and control click our text, like so. And basically all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shut the, the uh, Blow Bar. Actually, I'm going to call it Glow Bar. There we go. I want to shut the Glow Bar group off by hitting that little eyeball icon. And I'm going to grab my gradient tool and set it to, well, I just, let me just show you what I did there. I just clicked this little gradient bar up here to open the gradient editor. And I'm going to choose foreground to transparent. Remember, our foreground color is that hot pink. So, foreground to transparent, great. And all I'm going to do, well, on a new layer, so select the Trails layer and hit the New Layer icon. On this new layer, which I'm going to call uh, Colorize, we're just going to pull straight up from the bottom here, maybe halfway up the letters. It's going to give us that nice pink glow. All right, I'm going to hit Command or Control D uh, to deselect. And I don't want all of this green here on the bottom of the G, so I'm just going to grab the eraser tool, and I'm going to grab a nice big soft-edged eraser, maybe 48, eh, bigger than that, 100. And let's just, oh, that's a bit too much. Just kind of fade some of that away like so. And then with this colorized layer, I'm going to go ahead and let's try setting it to overlay. There we go. That looks pretty good. Turn that uh, glow bar back on. You can see there's definitely pink being glowed back onto our text. And that is the final text effect. It took a little while to do, but, uh, you know, once you do it a couple times, you'll really be able to fly through it. Um, you know, it always takes a little bit longer to explain something. But I hope you learned a thing or two, maybe about editing paths, maybe about working with the brush tool, maybe about clipping masks, whatever it is you learned. Uh, I hope you learned a lot of stuff. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, thank you for checking out the video. Now, please go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com.